Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to be going over using display groups and overlay plots in Abacus to customize your model output to allow us to do things like this where we can display uh, part, of, part of a model and the entire part of a different part of the model uh, based upon different output variables and uh, do it in a manner that allows us to plot uh, different output variables in these different parts. So in this case we're plotting stress in this ceramic tile which has been impacted by a projectile and it's created a damage zone here and uh, what we've done is plot the entire damage zone uh, in an opaque manner and then we've plotted just a slice of the tile and made that translucent to allow us to visualize some of these damage pattern features that have developed. And so what I'm going to do is walk you through the steps on how we arrived at this output. So uh, the two main tools that we've used are, uh, one of them is under tools, uh, and then there's the display group tool, so we'll bring up the display group manager here. And the other one is under view, this is the overlay plot uh, options and we'll bring that up here so you can see we've, we're using uh, a couple overlay plots and we're also using some display groups we've, we've established and I'm gonna go ahead and start from scratch and just delete all of the stuff so delete that and then we're gonna go ahead and we'll delete our display groups and start anew Okay, so this is our, our full model here. Uh, it is, uh, I guess I said a target. It's, uh, let me turn off the translucency. So under the common plot options, under other, under translucency, you can uh, change the translucency of your plot. And so here we have our, our, our target, a ceramic target being impacted by a rigid uh, steel impactor. We're here, we're only modeling half of it. Um, and then it's encased in a steel case. Uh, and what we're really concerned about again is the damage pattern and not so much everything else. So from here you can see there's not that much information to be gleaned uh, from this particular view. So uh, what I'm interested in at first is, is kind of parsing up the model and so we'll do that using the display groups and uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start creating some display groups. So here under create display groups I have different means of selecting different parts of my model. I can select different part instances, I can select elements, uh, and I can select elements either by element sets or I can pick them from the viewport. Um, I don't want to do that. Uh, I... Okay, it seems to be frozen. Um, or I can do nodes or surfaces or anything else here. Um, and there's a lot of different options, uh, but we are just going to explore um, the elements right now. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and create one just for the target. So here under part instances, I've selected my target. And I'm going to go ahead and save the selection as. So this will save what is currently highlighted in blue, and that is my target. Okay, and I hit enter to advance that. Um, and then I want to go ahead and create one for the damaged region. So under elements, I can go ahead and pick um, from the result value. Um, and in this case, I can pick from either stress or all these user-defined output variables or displacement uh, or velocity, whatever. But in this case, I know that my damage is uh, SVD for, SDD 14. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. That will show my damage pattern here, and then I can select uh, the type of uh, range I want to select, uh, anything less than a certain value, in between values, or in this case, greater than some value, so allow me to pick my min, which I happen to know 0.01 is a good value for that. And again, I'm going to go ahead and save the selection as my damage. Okay, so I've created my target, I've created my damage. Um, uh, what I also want to do is create a slice of the target. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is go over here to click target and plot. And this will go ahead and remove the default, which is everything, and just plot my target. 
Um, and uh, what I'm going to go do then is go ahead and under elements and element sets, I've predefined each quadrant of my model. So in this case, we can highlight sort of this quadrant four, which happens to be the outside here, and it includes the case and everything else. Um, but I'm not interested in that. I want to go ahead and quadrant one is this closest one. I'm going to go ahead and pick from these Boolean options down here. So these Boolean options will allow you to take whatever you selected, in this case the quarter of the model, and perform a Boolean option on what is in the viewport, which is currently this, this target right here. And I'll go ahead and remove that. And that will remove, oh, I'm sorry, it's this quadrant right here, and that will remove that quadrant. And so now, instead of saving selection as, which the selection again is what's in blue, which is my quarter model, I want to save what's in the viewport. So I'll go ahead and click Save As, and I'll put this as my target slice one. Okay. So I've done that. And for some reason, it has inverted to transparency, which I'm not sure why. Um, but that'll let me uh, help show you what you can do with this tool. So um, now what I'm going to go ahead and do is plot the damage region as well. And I can do that by simply just clicking add. I don't need to use any other tool to create this type of effect. So now you can see I've got my entire damage region uh, and it is, um, it is it was opaque for some reason. I'm not sure why that is. So if I go ahead and go back to the common plot options here, um, I can see that if it's if I make it translucent, all of it becomes translucent. If I make it solid, all of it becomes solid. Uh, but I can lock the different layers and apply these effects separately. So I can go ahead and lock the damage region, which I would like it to be opaque, and then I can apply the translucency only to the target. And so that's kind of a cool effect there too. So now I can see all these other features that would otherwise be obscured. Um, and that's a nice effect there. But if I want to say, look at uh, stress in the target and uh, maybe another variable. So in this case, this is a, a, a plastic strain rate, um, which I can look at in this damage region here. Uh, I don't have that option using this tool alone. Uh, but what I can do is go and use my overlay plot option. So overlay plots allow you to create uh, what are essentially completely separate plots. Um, could be in different viewports and then just put them on top of each other and I think you can do as many as you want. Uh, so when you bring this up here you have uh, various options for your layers. Uh, you, you can select which effects uh, apply only to a single layer versus all layers. And in this case, I'd like the plot states and options in the field outputs to be applied only to the current layer, of which there are none at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and create a layer for the target. And in this case, enter does not advance this entry, so I'll have to go ahead and click OK. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for the damage and click OK. And then to display both layers, I'm going to go ahead and click Plot Overlay. So now this will click, we'll, we'll, we'll plot both of these plots, and it, it's not set up for what I want yet, which is why it looks so terrible. So I'll make one visible. This will be my damage. And I'll go back up and look at my Display Group Manager. And I can see that there's no more display groups. Uh, it is reverted to the default, which is uh, everything or something. It's not, that it's not everything, but it's reverted to some default where I have no display groups plotted. So for my damage, I'll go ahead and plot that. And now I see my damage region visible. And this is what the output variable that I want. Um, I'll then go ahead and switch over to the target and I'll make only that visible. And so my target now, again, there's no display groups plotted, so I'll plot my target slice, which is cool. And in this case, I don't want to plot 16, I want to plot uh, the stress. So now here I see the stress field in my target, and I can also add in the damaged region with a different output variable. So if I switch, if I go ahead and make 
the damage current, you can see it'll switch over to the output variable that is displayed there. Uh, and then there, you also have the option to set the layer offset. So when these are right on top of each other, there's generally some artifacting due to the uh, overlapping of, of different external features like this edge right here. And so you can alleviate that by setting some small offset relative to your model. Um, in this case, that just about does it. And there you go. Oh, one other tip too, if you want to go ahead and animate these, uh, if you go to your animation options in the viewports, you got to make sure that both of the contents, so you have, you have two options for plot one, uh, and you got to make sure that, that all the layers are selected if you want to go ahead and animate that. And that does it for this tutorial. I hope you guys found this interesting, and I will catch you guys next time.